Welcome to the deep dive. Today, um, we're going to be talking about something that's uh, pretty mind-bending, even for us, and we're used to this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those ideas that really gets to the heart of what we think we know about reality. We're talking about quantum suicide and the idea of quantum immortality. It all starts with quantum mechanics, and uh, and one of the most important concepts there is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Right, so this principle basically says that we can't know everything about a quantum particle at the same time. Exactly. We can know its position or its momentum, but not both with perfect accuracy at the same moment. It's kind of like trying to find something in a completely dark room by throwing a medicine ball at it. <laughs> I like that analogy. You can tell where the object is by where the ball hits it, but by doing so, you've also changed where the object is. And at the quantum level, it's not just about our tools being limited. It's about a fundamental fuzziness built into reality itself. Yeah, even the act of observing a particle changes it. You know, like when we bounce a photon off it to see where it is. It's almost like the universe is playing hide and seek with us. And that leads us to this, uh, this thought experiment called quantum suicide. Okay, so imagine a person with a gun pointed at their head. But this isn't just any gun. Right, it's hooked up to a device that measures the spin of a quantum particle, like an electron. If the particle is spinning up, the gun fires. If it's spinning down, it just clicks. So every time the trigger is pulled, it's a 50-50 chance, right? Well, that's if you're thinking about it from the perspective of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Right, the Copenhagen interpretation says that the particle is in a superposition of states, both spin up and spin down at the same time until we measure it. Exactly, and the act of measurement forces it to collapse into one state or the other. So in that view, eventually in one reality, the person is going to, well, uh, not survive. Yeah. But then there's the many worlds interpretation. The MWI suggests that every time a quantum measurement happens, the universe splits. Whoa. Okay. All, all of a sudden. So instead of one reality where the person either lives or dies, we now have two realities. Yeah. One where the gun fires and one where it doesn't. So reality is constantly branching out like a tree with every quantum event. That's a good way to think about it. Okay. And that brings us to the concept of quantum immortality. Right. So in the universes where the gun fires, the person's consciousness ceases to exist. But in the universes where it doesn't survive. And from their perspective, they just keep surviving no matter how many times they pull the trigger. So they're essentially immortal, at least from their own point of view. In a sense, yes. Their consciousness only follows the branches where they survive. Wow. That's, um, that's a lot to take in. So does this mean we're all potentially immortal then? Well, not so fast. It's important to remember that this is just a thought experiment. Right. We can't just apply this to real life and assume we can cheat death. Exactly. And even within the theoretical framework of the many worlds interpretation, there are a lot of problems with the idea of quantum immortality. Okay, so what are some of those problems? Well, for one thing, most real world death isn't like this sudden quantum event. It's usually a process, not an instant on or off switch. Right, so it's hard to map the logic of quantum suicide onto the complexities of real life. Hmm, that makes sense. So even if the many worlds interpretation is true, we can't just assume we're all going to live forever. Exactly. But it's still a fascinating idea to think about. And it really highlights some of the strange and counterintuitive implications of quantum mechanics. For sure. It really makes you question what we think we know about reality. It definitely does. And it opens up all sorts of other philosophical questions too. Like what does it even mean to be a self if there are infinite versions of you out there in the multiverse? Yeah, that's a whole other rabbit hole we could go down. And then there's the question of free will. If every possible outcome is happening somewhere, does that mean our choices don't really matter? Okay, now my head is really starting to spin. Mm -hmm. um, really trying to grapple with this idea of uh, a constantly branching multiverse and what it means for you know for our sense of self and our idea of free will last time we were talking about some of the problems with the concept of quantum immortality like how it doesn't really line up with the way death actually works in the real world right in the quantum suicide thought experiment death is this instantaneous binary event either the gun fires or it doesn't but in reality death is rarely so clear-cut yeah it's more like a process of fading away rather than a sudden stop. Exactly. But even setting that aside, there are some pretty fundamental challenges to quantum immortality, even within the framework of the many worlds interpretation. One of the biggest ones has to do with how probabilities work in a multiverse. Because if every possible outcome is happening in some universe, 
Wouldn't that make everything equally likely? Well, that's where the concept of measure comes into play. Right, we talked about that a little bit in the last part. So it's not just that every outcome exists, it's that some universes have a higher measure than others. Meaning they're more probable. Exactly. So even if there's a universe out there where I suddenly become a world famous rock star, the measure of that universe might be so small that it's practically impossible for my consciousness to end up there. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So even if there are infinite versions of me out there making every possible choice, mm -hmm. the ones that are more aligned with the probabilities of our reality are the ones I'm more likely to experience. Right. It's not just about surviving, it's about surviving in a way that's statistically likely. So the idea of just recklessly doing dangerous things and assuming you'll always survive in some universe is probably not a good strategy. Probably not. But I want to go back to something we touched on before about the potential for suffering in those universes where we do survive against all odds. Some people find that idea pretty disturbing. I can see why. The thought of being stuck in a reality where you're constantly experiencing near-death events or enduring unimaginable pain is pretty terrifying. It's like that cosmic horror movie scenario where you just can't escape the worst possible outcomes. But again, proponents of the MWI would argue that this fear is based on a misunderstanding of how measure works. Those universes where you're constantly suffering would likely have an increasingly infinitesimal measure. So the chances of my consciousness ending up there while not zero would be incredibly small. Right. And some physicists even suggest that if quantum immortality were real, the most likely experience would be to suddenly find yourself in a stable and safe reality. So instead of being endlessly bounced around from one near-death experience to another, I might just suddenly find myself in a universe where everything is peaceful and calm. It's a possibility, though again, we're deep into speculation here. Right, this is all theoretical. But even if we don't take the many worlds interpretation literally, I think it's an incredibly valuable thought experiment. It really forces us to think about the nature of reality in a whole new way. It challenges our assumptions about what it means to exist, about the nature of consciousness, and about how our subjective experiences relate to the objective world. And even if it turns out to be wrong, it can still lead us to ask new questions and explore new avenues of thought. For sure. Okay, so we've talked about how the many worlds interpretation challenges our ideas about death and the self. But what about free will? How does that fit into all of this? That's a really interesting question. And it's one that has puzzled philosophers for centuries. Because if every possible outcome is playing out somewhere, does that mean our choices don't really matter? It seems like it would, right. If everything that could happen is already happening, then in a sense, everything is predetermined. But at the same time, it also seems like it could suggest a kind of ultimate freedom. Because if every possibility is real, then there's a version of me out there who has made every choice I could ever possibly make. That's a great point. It's huh. almost like our free will isn't expressed in this one particular reality, but in the totality of choices made by all the versions of ourselves across the multiverse. Whoa. Okay, now that's a really trippy thought. So maybe instead of thinking about free will as the ability to choose between different paths in this reality, we should think about it as the ability to experience all possible paths across all realities. It's a fascinating possibility. So even if our choices are predetermined in some sense, the experience of making those choices and living with the consequences is still unique to each version of ourselves. Exactly. And that experience, that subjective journey through the multiverse is something that can't be taken away from us. And I think it's safe to say that we've uh, we've gone pretty deep down the rabbit hole. Yeah, we've definitely stretched our brains a bit. But even if we don't come away from this fully convinced that the many worlds interpretation is correct, yeah, I think there are still some valuable takeaways. Oh, absolutely. For me, one of the biggest takeaways is just how much we still don't know about the universe. Yeah, I mean, quantum mechanics itself is still full of mysteries. And then when you add consciousness into the mix, things get even weirder. Right. We don't even really have a good definition of what consciousness is, let alone how it fits into the framework of quantum mechanics. So I think it's important to approach all of this with a sense of humility. Hmm. We're dealing with some of the biggest questions the humans have ever asked. And we may never have all the answers, but I think that's okay. Yeah, the journey of trying to understand the universe is just as important as the destination. Maybe even more so. And I think thought experiments like quantum suicide can be really helpful in that journey. They force us to challenge our assumptions and to think outside the box. And even if they turn out to be wrong, they can still spark new ideas 
and lead to new discoveries. Right, they can help us to see the world in a new light. So even if we don't all become quantum immortals, I think we can all benefit from thinking about these ideas and wrestling with these questions. I agree. I think it's something we should all keep exploring. Yeah, and who knows, maybe someday we'll have some real answers to these mysteries. Or maybe the answers will just lead to more questions. Either way, it's going to be an exciting journey. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into quantum suicide and quantum immortality. It's been a pleasure. And as always, we encourage you to keep exploring these mind-bending ideas and to never stop asking those big questions.